you can see the graphic on the screen demonstrating that Blue Ghost is getting into that vertical configuration and doing that pitch over as expected. Man engine off. Terminal guidance. 500 meters up. Batteries at 87 percent. All right, from here on out, it is just going to be those Spectra 400 engines. meters. Now, just as a reminder, those uh, Spectra engines that we see firing right now on our on our uh, GNC screen. GNC and VNS flight on out, spread if I 49.2 and ready. They are doing those pulses. VNS is in relative. 260 meters up. First redirect occurred, 98 meters from original target. Our One minute point. remaining in flight. vehicle is converged on its commanded descent profile. All right, so we are in that autonomous exactly. phase that you had described to us. She is ready and has been preparing for this. You're going to he hear a lot of call-outs here about vision navigation solutions, laser Seconds range remaining finder. in terminal. 100 meters up. And let's Health just... Systems. Navigation filter is still healthy. Second hazard avoidance occurred, five meters from previous target. 50 meters up, 30 seconds remaining in flight. Okay, look, error five, 49.4. Copy. Verified. 11 meters up. Contact. Shut down. Three contact sensors tripped. Engine shut down confirmed. Power's nominal vehicle is charging. IMU reports lunar gravity and it is stable. Alcon, chief engineer on ops. Y'all select the landing. We're on the moon. just became the first commercial company in history to complete a fully successful moon landing. Congratulations to the entire team. This is such an incredible feat for Firefly, NASA, our nation, and the world as we pave the way for a lasting lunar presence. Congratulations, Bridget. And to our Firefly and NASA teams, what a nail-biting moment in history. The joint teams are now celebrating or enjoying this much-deserved celebration at our landing event here in North Austin, Texas. This marks the beginning of the next phase of the mission, surface operations. How are you feeling, Bridget? Honestly, overwhelmed. I am so proud of our team. Firefly has a way of constantly exceeding expectations. This is a perfect example of that. Over the last four years, so many dedicated Fireflies across different teams and disciplines came together to make this happen. Now we have a permanent presence on the moon with every employee's name engraved on a Blue Ghost plaque. So now when we look up at the moon, we can tell our kids and future generations that their family name is up there. Thanks to this team and everything they have achieved, but it's not over. We will be operating the payloads and gathering even more data that will make an even larger impact on the future of space exploration. Congratulations. Thank and you. And now this lunar lander is gearing up to conduct those surface operations and downlink that anticipated image from the lunar surface. So while we stand by for that, we have Tony back with some guests from NASA's Science Mission Directorate. Tony. Come, come. 
Thank you, Nella from Bridget. Now joining us is Associate Administrator for the Science Mission Director at Nikki Fox, and then the uh, Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration with NASA Science Mission Director, Joel Kearns. Nikki, Joel, I mean, what a momentous occasion. How are you guys feeling? We're on the moon! <laughs> So my question is, what do you think of that Firefly team? <laughs> it is such an exciting time. I mean, what a huge congratulations to everyone. Now, Nikki, you know, can you tell us a little bit more about why this landing location was chosen and why, you know, Blue Ghost uh, is on the near side why, and compared to when some other landing sites are chosen for other of our CLIPS flights? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we choose, I'm sorry, I'm just so excited right now, but um, <laughs> we, we choose our, our, our landing sites very carefully. Um, our CLIPS landers will go to the South Pole, to the near side, to the far side. Um, this one in this really perfect location. Um, we want to study the geological features on the moon. Um, we want to study the interaction with the solar wind. We want to just learn more about the regolith. Um, we want to be able to prepare for our future astronauts to go and keep them safe. And so we, we, we chose the science instruments perfectly to go to this incredible place on the moon. That we did. And you know, Joel, this is the most NASA science that we have sent on Eclipse flight thus far. Can you tell us a little bit more than what is the primary goal or what are we hoping to find then with all of this? So we're landing in a place that's of great scientific interest, but it was also at a very achievable place to land. And there are studies that range from studies of the sun that we'll conduct from the surface of the moon, studies of the abrasive um, dust of the regolith, we're gonna drill into the surface, we're gonna pick up regolith. It's just, it was gonna answer so many questions over this one, one lunar day long mission. It's gonna be really one for the history books. That's right, you know, and speaking then about all those questions that we're gonna answer, Nikki, tell us, what then of the science and data that we learn on the moon, how can that help us back here on Earth? So there are so many ways that, you know, everything we do in NASA science is so interconnected. We study everything from the center of the sun to the edge of the universe. Right now, focusing on the moon, learning more about particularly things like, um, you know, how that regolith, um, how it sort of interacts when we land, what the plume looks like, how sticky it is, if we can clean it off those surfaces, um, just telling us all about that. For us here on Earth, uh, all this technology that we're sending up to the moon continually all has real world applications as well and so everything that we do uh, you know coming back and serving humanity and inspiring the world with NASA science that's right we